Moving on then, capital acquisitions tax. So if there's a, I suppose, an intention to transfer on or to bequeath or leave in your will forestry lands to someone in the gen next generation, this essentially is gift or inheritance tax. And regardless of whether it's a gift or inheritance, the same rules apply essentially. Um, so looking again, looking at the, the woodlands or the standing timber, again, the, the importance of having a separate valuation for that. Um, there's a relief there called agriculture relief. Before I get into that, what, what, what actually, what we're looking at when, when we're talking about gift or inheritance taxes, say your son or daughter, um, they will have a tax free threshold of 320,000 euro. Anything above that, whatever they get from you, or your spouse is taxed at 33 um, percent if it's from an aunt or uncle you're taking something from an aunt or uncle the tax threshold is less it's 32,500 and it's from if it's from someone a gift or inheritance from someone who's not connected to you at all it, the tax free threshold is, is 16,250 euro again anything above that is taxed at 33 percent so you could think to yourself well a son or daughter look 320,000 euro sure look the value of the forestry land will be covered there. But like if there's a if it's part of a bigger farm, you know, you've a farmhouse, you've livestock, machinery, entitlements, all that has a value, you find out for the son or daughter that the three hundred and twenty thousand euro, you know, you wouldn't have much road in that before it's it's used up. So the relief we look at there in terms of a transfer of farm will be agricultural relief, but it's also has a uh, a connection there to, to woodland. So the way agricultural relief works is it will the, it will shrink the value down. So say if a farm is worth one million, uh, and we'll stick to that example for the moment, what agricultural relief does is it shrinks it down by 90%. So the son or daughter there isn't seen to take a million worth of agricultural assets. They'll take 100,000. So if you bear in mind the tax fee threshold is 320,000 euro, you're taking them from a situation whereby you're taking a million, deducting your 320, and your son or daughter paying tax at 33%, to a situation where they're taking 100,000, even though it's the same assets, and it fits in nicely then underneath the tax free threshold. So we're, so we're taking that principle then, and it can apply in two scenarios then in terms of uh, forestry. The first, again, we're, we're separating out the value of the lands and the trees, and I suppose I'll be like a broken record here, but it's very important. When you're separating out the lands and the trees, in that scenario, agricultural relief will apply automatically. There's no conditions. Uh, you apply it to the, the value of the trees. Looking at the example there on the right hand side, you can see very clearly there, the value of 288,000 is being shrunk down to 28,000. You can see that there on the right hand side. I add that back then to the value of the underlying lands, and we'll say there's no agricultural relief being claimed on that. That brings your lands and trees combined up to 54,000, nicely underneath your, your tax fee threshold there of 320. If that relief wasn't sought, you're simply putting your, 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 your using up essentially your tax fee threshold to cover the value of that, of that benefit. And bear in mind if the more benefits come down the line, you need to maintain the, the taxi threshold as much as possible. Agri agricultural relief then can apply again in a bit more detail to the actual lands and trees, but then condition, certain conditions apply. We look at the effect first. So again, we're looking at the same portion of la you know, forestry lands, that value, 313,000 euro. We apply it to the whole lot, not just the trees. We're looking at the underlying lands as well. You can see it then that brings down the taxable value to just up above 30,000 euro. So compare that then to the lands and trees combined. You know, there's a difference there about 23,000 euro. You're essentially saving more of your taxi threshold for other, for other benefits. Now, when you're applying agricultural relief to both the trees and lands, I mentioned there's conditions. The first one really is, is called the farmer test. So the recipient 80% of their assets, including what they're taking from you, 80% of their assets must be of an agricultural nature. Must be agricultural assets being lands, farmhouse, livestock machinery, uh, entitlements. And your, your forestry land then is taken into account as well. So 80% of their assets. That's an assets test, very clean cut. That's the first part. 
the second part then is really when you're looking at farmlands you have the option either to work the lands the recipient has the option to work their lands themselves or lease out the lands leasing out here really isn't an option for forestry lands the only option available really is to work it um now what the legislation the guidelines say is that the recipient if they don't have a green cert they have to spend not less than 50 percent of their normal working week working lands that's not tenable here when you're looking at forestry lands and revenue you're well aware that they've issued guidelines on it so if you're continuing on the, the forestry as a commercial operation you're 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 showing your income returning for your your i'm talking about the recipient here returning their income for the income tax return they're doing that for six years after the the transfer or the the, the date of valuation date if it's if it's on a on a debt then they'll their agricultural lease then is maintained um so yeah you can see the the savings there but again the, the 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 common theme here is just the importance of separating the values um between the underlying lands and the standing timber